Welcome to this guided meditation with Father Mark, your guide for a more intimate and transformative connection with Christ. Please pause, play, and adapt this aid to facilitate your own personal conversation with the Lord. Prepare ourselves now to enter into a moment of prayer with the Lord and dialogue with Him. Set aside anything that would distract you and bring your heart into the presence of the Lord. And let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus, as I come into your presence, as always, I activate those virtues of faith, hope, and love. Faith first by affirming that I believe in you, Lord. I believe you're here, this moment of prayer. I believe you're with me, and that you want to speak to me. Believe that just as I speak to so many people throughout the day, I can speak directly to you. I believe that, Lord. And I hope in you. I hope in your heart, your love, your kindness, your goodness, your benevolence, that you are positively disposed towards me as a brother would be to a brother, as a father would be to a son, as a spouse would be to their beloved. I hope in that nurturing, loving, supportive, interested relationship that we have, and that you will give me and want to give me all good things. You're not a God to be feared. You don't have it out for me, but you're my advocate, my, my brother. You're in my camp, in my favor. And so I thank you for that, and I hope in that, hope in that loving, kind nature that you have towards me. And I love you because of both these things, because I believe that you're here, and because I hope that you're in my corner. I love you for that. I love that even as perhaps I've never, I haven't always lived up to your friendship, that even though I sin, and do that which doesn't honor you at times, you still are merciful and and are in my corner. And so I love you for that, for that fidelity, for that goodness, for that patience, that kindness, that humility, that stability and constancy, that even as I'm up and down, you are always the same. I love you for that. And I love you that you love me faithfully and constantly. I thank you. Thank you for all the blessings in my life. Take some time just to think of those and, and thank you for, for each of them now. And I humble myself before you, Lord. Open my heart to you. I want to receive from you. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. As I open the words of scriptures and I open my heart and my mind, Come, Lord Jesus, speak to me. I want to meditate, Lord, on, on the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 22, verse 34 to 40. So I read that passage now and open my heart to catch some of the words, some of the concepts, some of the images you use that might speak or resonate to me. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him by asking, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole on the prophets depend on these two commandments. Immediately, Jesus, it jumps out to me the context, which I'm somewhat aware of from, from my reading of scripture, that the Sadducees who believed, didn't believe in the resurrection, had just asked you about that man that was married, and then his wife died, and now they're married, and there were seven of them. Whose wife will she be? And you said in heaven they won't be married. 
uh, and that God's the God of the living. And so you didn't side with their, their belief or their rejection of a resurrection, but you argued in favor of resurrection. And so the Pharisees are taking advantage of the Sadducees losing against you to try to set you up for failure and to win over you and thus implicitly winning points against the Sadducees. They're, they're pulling you into their petty religious conflicts. And Jesus, it just makes me meditate, reflect on, I'm sometimes caught up in these discussions with people and put into different conversations and people ask questions wanting me to side one way or the other. And yet you don't get pulled into those things. You keep your eyes on the Lord. You keep your eyes on God, on, on your Father's heart, on the truth that you want to communicate. And that inspires me, Jesus, to not have a human kind of criteria in responding to questions, but to raise my heart and mind towards you constantly. That what honors you is what I should speak that what you would like me to speak is where my heart and mind should be. And not so much in, well, what does this person want to hear? What do I want to tell this person? What do I think will advance their cause? How much can they handle? Yes, human prudence is part of my calculation, but it should be above all a reflection based before you with your mind and heart. And yes, bring my human observations to bear. Think about what the soul can handle. Think about what's prudent to say, but not only a human prudence, but a divine prudence and a witnessing to you in those conversations. So Jesus, give me your prudence. Give me your wisdom to answer, to respond according to your truth according to your heart, which includes loving the individual where they're at, but also includes loving your father and being true to him and to his revelation. And then Jesus, that you, you give him an answer. So I move on to your answer. What's the greatest commandment? Loving the Lord your God, all your heart, your soul, and your mind. That's the greatest. Jesus, you go back to Deuteronomy 6, which would be familiar to both the Pharisees and Sadducees and all your listeners, that greatest of commandments, which you don't undermine by any means. You reinforce. Reminds me of when you said not one iota, one letter of the law should be omitted, right? You're faithful and true to what the Father revealed in the Old Testament that's pure and true and perennial. And this, listen, Israel, Yahweh, our God is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength. You reinforce that. And that continues, let the words you enjoy, I enjoin on you today in your heart, you shall tell them to your children. Like that phrase evokes that primacy that God should have in our hearts and that we should share that with our children and pass it on to the next generation and build the life of our families, the life of our peoples on this continuous enthronement and honoring of God above all things and pass that on to this next generation. That's what you're invoking when you say this to them. It's not just the one phrase, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, as big and important as that is, but it's also the passing it on to the children, which we read about in Deuteronomy 6. So Jesus, I'm struck by your fidelity to your father. You're building a continuation on what he revealed and highlighting the passing on to the next generation. You're challenging both the Pharisees and the Sadducees challenging me. So I want to reflect, how am I doing at honoring the Lord my God with all my heart, all my soul, all my, that totality, that completeness? How am I living there? Is there anything that jumps to my mind and heart where I'm not 
loving you above all things. Or some creature, or some person, or some thing, or some value, some aspiration is the ultimate God in my heart around which I worship and order my decisions and my life. Is there any idol that needs dethroned in my heart so that you are above all things? And then finally, Jesus, when you, when you tell them or you add the second, which they didn't ask about, you give them a bonus. <laughs> Love the Lord your God. And, or love your neighbor, excuse me, as yourself. That the whole law depends on those two, God and neighbor. And maybe that's an indirect to the Pharisees that are trying to combat the Sadducees and put you in the middle. That you're saying, you know, yes, your intent in asking me this question wasn't to know what I really think is the ultimate, but it's to get back at the Sadducees. And I'm not going to get in the middle. You need to love your neighbor as yourself. Not to be looking constantly to one-up or to win or to conquer or to persuade to your truth. But you need to have a heart for your brother and sister. And those together, you can't love God absolutely at the expense of your brother and sister, nor can you love your brother and sister at the expense of God's commands. You need to love both, certainly with supremacy to God above all things but also your brothers and sisters as your very self. How those fit together in concrete circumstances, how I love you and how I love my brothers and sisters, Jesus, how I live that out in concrete conversations, discussions, meetings, one-on-one -on -one counseling, coaching, spiritual direction. How my brothers and sisters need to live that out in their family situations and work situations. That's why I need your grace, Lord. That's why I need the, the virtue and the gift of prudence and, and faith and, and having a deep relationship with you so I can have your heart and know how to apply that each and every day in all the circumstances of my life. So Jesus, come into my day. Walk with me. Help me to imitate you and live according to these, these truths, these priorities today. To love you above all things and to love my neighbor as I love myself. Amen. This has been a guided meditation with Father Mark Haydu of the Legionaries of Christ. If this has helped you, please consider sharing it with a friend, along with the other meditations, homilies, and talks found on the Legionaries of Christ podcast, located on all major platforms, or go to rcnytristate.org for links.